Uh, this is our Bible uh, verse for just today. As so we're going to think about it, this is from John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. It says, Yet a time is coming and has now come when true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. These words are Jesus' words as he's talking to the Samaritan woman by the well. And he talks a lot about worship, right? And here we are, we're in chapel. And it's like, what is chapel? Why do we do chapel? We do chapel to worship. And so I thought our first week, it might be a good idea to just think a little bit about what is worship. Sometimes you might hear the word worship connected to the word praise. Um, and that got me thinking about the word praise and the word appraisal. And uh, that led me here. Has anybody seen this show? Antiques Roadshow. Okay, so this is a show that like I used to love watching when I was a little kid. I'd go to my grandmother's house and she just had PBS on all the time. And this would come on and I always thought it was so cool. Um, those of you who are familiar with the show, what's it all about? What do they do on this show? Sarah, look at this. Um, people Sometimes they look old. Mm -hmm. Bingo, right? That's the fun. People bring stuff in from their house. Sometimes, like Sarah said, it's something that's really valuable and precious to their family. Sometimes it's something they found at a garage sale that they thought looked kind of cool, right? They're like, this might be worth something. And they bring it to these people who are experts in this field, and the experts look at the thing, and they appraise it. They say, this is worth $100. This is worth $1,000. And sometimes you're surprised watching it. So you're like, that can't be worth anything. And then it turns out megabucks, right? So I'm curious, does anybody in the room think that they, I can do that job. I know what stuff's worth. Anybody, anybody want to be brave? <laughs> Frenchie, I saw you scratch your nose. I'm going to take that as a volunteer. Come on down, Frenchie. Come on down. Come on down, Frenchie. Those of you who haven't been in chapel with me for a while, last year was kind of a weird COVID year. I'm a big fan of volunteers and voluntolds. So Frenchie's just been voluntold. Okay. Um, Frenchie, really easy, really easy, and you can get help from the audience, okay, you can phone a friend. I want you to take a guess. So this was a 1907 Robert Henri, I don't know, uh, oil painting, uh, and, and this woman brought it in. It's a painting of her grandmother by this painter guy. What do you think? How much is it worth? She's really considering. She is, she's taking all of her expert, and this is just like what they do on the show. Go for it. Any number. Yes. $800. Okay, raise your hand if you think it's going to be more than $800. Raise your hand if you think it's going to be less than $800. Okay, let's see, room roll for you, please. $300,000. Thank you, Frenchie, you can take a seat. $300,000, this one is basic, okay. Who thinks I can do better than Frenchie? Anybody, anybody? Sarah, Sarah has an idea and then you're gonna be next. Okay, I got one more. Okay. Bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. These are, they are um, baseball cards from the red stockings which were a, a, a team before the Red Sox, I guess. The first baseball team to get paid for playing baseball, and this woman happened to have a collection of their original baseball cards. What do you think? What's it worth? Well, True. I've never heard of the Red Stockings. But I mean, they were the first baseball team to get paid. There's history there, sure. But what do you think, Sarah? Give it a number. $2,300. $2,300. Who thinks it's going to be more? Who thinks it's going to be less? All right, let's see how we did. A million dollars. <laughs> okay, red stockings baseball cards worth a million dollars. Okay, come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. All right, we got one more. One more. 
Okay, so this is a small clay jar from a tribal area in Mexico that they think was from 100 BC, okay? So that's before Christ, okay? A really, really, really old, tiny, tiny, tiny little clay jar. What do we think? Two million. I want, I'm, okay, she's saying two million. She's seeing a pattern, right? She's saying this is old, like before Jesus, old. She's thinking two million. Who thinks more? Anybody? Anybody? A couple people think more. Who thinks less? Okay, let's see. 200 bucks. 200 dollars, okay? Uh, it was that old. They're just not that rare. And people just don't want them, I guess. And Sarah just asked a great question. She goes, why? Right? It seems like something that is that old and has that much history should have more value. Right? And in fact, if you go back and watch the appraiser, the appraiser says, this thing really should be worth more. But they're only going to pay you about 200 bucks for it if you try and sell it. Right? So this is the question then. Okay? What's the difference between appraisal and praise? On Antiques Roadshow, when you go and you bring something to them, they are making an estimation of what they think other people think this thing is worth, right? They're not necessarily think that saying this thing has any inherent value in and of itself, but they're saying if you were to take it to auction, if you were going to try and sell it, this is about how much other people would pay you for it. And the fact is, is that's what we do with pretty much any object. Like, think of something that you think of and you're like, oh, that's, that's valuable, right? I don't know, gold, diamonds, rubies, whatever. That thing is actually only worth as much as other people are willing to pay you for it, right? And so you could have something that maybe doesn't seem all that valuable, a bunch of baseball cards, they're paper, right? But because other people think it's important, they're willing to pay a lot for it, up to a million dollars. Appraisal. When you think about something and you wonder, I wonder how much other people think this is worth. Praise is a different thing. Praise is a different thing. Because like we said, there are things that have worth depending on other people's opinions. But there are other things that just have true inherent value, right? Objects, they might be worth a lot one day and worth nothing the next day, depending on the market. But there are things that have true inherent value. What's something that has true inherent value that is in this room right now? Sitting in these chairs, the hands are kind of right. You, me, we as human <laughs> beings have true and inherent value that goes beyond what other people think. We have true and inherent value. And that's one of the reasons at BCA we want to respect each other and honor each other, right? Because I'm looking at you and you have true inherent value just because of who you are. And I have true inherent value because of who I am. Why? The Bible tells us it's because we are created in God's image. Because God has true inherent value that goes even beyond this world. Beyond what anybody could pay or decide or appraise. And that's what I want to think about a little bit when you think about chapel. We think about worship, okay? I think sometimes we come in here, and um, I know I do it, and I, I remember I went to a Christian high school. I so get it. We use this as a time of appraisal, right? And we kind of think about God and what's going on, and we think, what are other people thinking about this right now, right? What are other people thinking about God? What are other people thinking about me? What are other people thinking about the fact that we're all in this room, and it's kind of warm, and we're sitting in these chairs, and the projector's not working, whatever. And we're thinking about all that other stuff. We're appraising the situation. But actually, worship is an opportunity to not just appraise the situation, but to be in a position of praise. And to think about something, to think about someone, God, who has true, ultimate, beautiful, inherent value. And it's not, here's what I think you think about him. It's you and him. So we get to do it together. We're all in this room, but we're all focused in the same direction. Um, I also want you to think about this idea of work. Worship and praising and appraisal all comes back to what is something worth? What is something valued at? Like I said, you have inherent value. You have inherent worth just as you are right now. No matter what anybody else thinks, you just do. What are those things in your life that you ascribe worth to? With your time, with your energy, with your words? What are those things? And that's going to be a different answer for all of us, right? 
Another reason we come together in chapel is because this is a time for us all to focus, again, put all those other things kind of outside the room and think about God, the God of the universe, who created you and loves you, and his ultimate value, and his ultimate work, and to focus on him for this time together. And then we go back, we go back to our classes, we go back to all those other things that do have worth and do have value. But chapel is that time to set aside where we get to do that in a really special way. So I'm really excited to have this year with you guys. I think it's gonna be a great year. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, if you guys please join me in prayer and then the bells can ring. Dear God, we praise you for who you are. We praise you that you are worthy. You are worthy of our praise, that you have value. We thank you, Lord, that you have imbued us with value, that we have inherent worth, we have an inherent value just because of who we are, because who you created us, you have created us to be. Would we see our own worth today, Lord? As we encounter each other, would we see the worth and value um, reflected in the other faces that we talk to, that we sit next to, that we teach, that we learn from? And would you help us see your worth and your value as it is in that simple. In Jesus' name, amen.